<laughs> if you have your Bibles now, turn with me to again to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. <clears throat> We're coming down to the end of the book of Hebrews and chapter 13, I want to read the first six verses this morning. Hebrews 13, 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Let us pray. Almighty God, how thankful and grateful we truly are for this time that we can come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, help us to get our eyes off the things of this world. Look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Lord, we thank you that we were spared by the hurricane that came. We realize that a lot of people are not. We're taking up this offering for uh, uh, the south part of our state, but that part of our state is the hardest hit by the hurricane. So I pray that our people would give and give generously to this uh, of state offering that we're taking up now. Lord, I pray too also that you'll continue to bless our church. We do pray for uh, those that are in the hospital. Pray for those that need, uh, that need help in any way, shape, or fashion. We pray, Lord God, that you will uh, uh, guide and direct us in doing and, and making good, sound decisions that would help us to be the kind of people, Lord God, that you'd want us to be. Help us to live by faith and to serve you and do your will. And we pray and we ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to talk to you about living for Jesus. Uh, you see, we do not rest on the whims of men, nor on the ideas of society, but on what God has said. You see, what God has said, we believe. What God has commanded, we must do. It is the Word of God that will give us guidance. I know, you know, you got all kinds of things that you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to act and all those things from the government and from the state and from other people. But let me just say this to you. You really want to know what to do, how to do it, how to act, how to live. Go to the Word of God. Amen. Let God speak to your heart. You see, <clears throat> it is the Word of God that will give us guidance it's the word of God that will give us wisdom. It's the word of God that will give us direction in our lives. The word of God calls forth the very best in every one of us. It is the word of God that shields us from uh, the tempter and gives us victory. You see, we need to be reminded each day what God has said. And the best way I know of to do that is to read your Bible faithfully every day. There you'll find what God has to say to you. 
Notice, first of all, in the verses that we've read here, it calls for brotherly love. Brotherly love refers to affections, sympathy, kindness. The Bible says if a man says he loves God and hates his brother, he's a liar. I've had people say, you know, I, yeah, I love God, and I love God, but I can't stand sister so-and-so. <laughs> huh. First John 4, 7 tells us we love, we love God, and we're not to hate our brother. Jesus said, if you come to the altar and your brother has something against you, leave your gift and go make it right. Now, it doesn't say, listen, it doesn't say if you have something against your brother, it's as if he has something against you. You're to do everything that you can possibly do to make it right. You see, we must initiate reconciliation. God's children are to do that. You know, I, I've thought about this a lot. I don't know about you, but if this attitude would grip every Christian, you talk about a celebration throughout the land, what a time it would be. Brothers forgiven, brothers, sisters forgiven, sisters. Oh, what a wonderful, glorious celebration that would truly be. And that's what we're doing. Secondly, it calls for hospitality. You know, if a person is in need of a shelter, food, clothing, you must respond. And respond with an open heart. During a hurricane, by the way, in our house we had six people, four dogs, and three cats. Now, I'm not sure that's, that's right, but... We did have six people. You can verify that, right, David? Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think he said he was going to hit about 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Dave was over there with us, and he said, well, we'll all get in this room here, and this will be a good place, you know. Well, I went to bed at 10 o'clock, and I woke up at 6 the next morning. <laughs> I didn't even know where the thing What had happened. <laughs> You see. But here's the thing about it. We're to help people. We're to do. We're to give. Now, all of us like to say we were, we were spared, right? Your house wasn't hit by the storm. Your lights didn't go out in that. You ought to be more concerned than about other people who's dead. When our electricity went off and didn't come on. Do you know there's still people today who have no electricity? One of my neighbors, he left, got in his car, and headed, uh, headed north. He didn't go south, no. He headed north. He went to Georgia, someplace in Georgia. Got him a hotel room. Gonna ride this thing out. You know what happened? The power went out. He had rented the motel for three days, <laughs> and all three days they were without power. <laughs> I told him, I said, You could have come over and stayed with me. What's one more person? <laughs> we got to, you know, you just had to walk up the street a little way. But that's what we're to do, you see. We're to help one another, we're to do what we can, you know. <clears throat> We must respond with an open heart and open arms. And it doesn't, listen, it doesn't have to be in a time of disaster. We're to do that all the time. When you have a neighbor, a friend, or someone who's in need, then show hospitality by taking care of them and helping them. 
and do it with open arms also. The third thing he mentioned here is the very fact that the marriage vows must not be broken. Many, many Christian homes today are falling apart because of the failure to listen to God's Word. You see, when one listens to what God has to say, he will discover something. He'll discover excuses like, I don't love you anymore. I can't get along with you anymore. All this will crumble in the sight of God. I don't know about you, dear friends, but today, one of the big, big problems throughout our land is the fact that the home is just disintegrating. Fathers just get up, walk off, bleed. Mothers run away with some other guy. All of this kind of stuff you see goes on. And we know from God's word that that's not right. God, I want to tell you something. God is deeply, deeply concerned about marriage. You know why? Because a broken home will give occasion for the enemies of God to delight in the tragic life of Christians. We need to remember the words of Nathan the prophet after David had repented. Nathan said, Because of this deed that thou hast done, thou hast given the enemy of God an occasion to blaspheme him. 2 Samuel 12, 14. S listen, sexual purity is to be the pattern for all Christians. Married or single. Anything, anything that drags our thoughts to lust, to impurity, uh, is to be eliminated. A child of God may legally do many things, but if they whittle away at the tear true spiritual hunger of one's heart. It, it, you know what it does? It makes it so easy for the enemies of God to say, look at you. Look at what you've done. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Up there in uh, where our uh, son is at in uh, Tennessee, one of the churches there, they had a young man who uh, did a drastically deed. Church is all upset. They fired him and everything else, which they should have done. But they hired another guy. They thought, oh, this, we'll get another guy here. And this guy's an older man. And he's been around for a long time. And, you know, he'll straighten things out. Everything will be all right. But you see, God doesn't always permit that thing to be straightened out. Because I just learned here last week that that problem's still going on. Two years later, and they still... The older man that they brought in to be the pastor of the church, he said, things are so bad in the congregation that he had to leave. He couldn't stay. Now, they just take whoever they can get. What a sad, sad situation that is. Not only did it affect the families, it affected the church and every member of it. We need to be extremely careful at this point. 
Now, you know, God, <clears throat> we can expect the judgment of God if we listen, if we do wrong. It'll come. You see, God wants us to live up to our faith and our profession and to be content with what we have. We're to bear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you bear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends, one of the things you'll want to do is to act like Jesus. We're to act like Christ. We're not to give, you see, we're not to give the world an opportunity to laugh at God. When these things happen, people just say, ha, 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 look at them. They talk about how good they are. They talk about being Christians. They talk about living for the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at them. They're worse than the people who never accepted Christ. We're listen, we're, everything that we do is to, to honor and praise God. We're not to do things that would harm or hurt the fellowship. You know, there is a conflict raging between God's people and Satan. It goes on all the time. And God admonishes us not to do anything that would give an occasion for the enemies of God to blaspheme them, to say anything to anybody. We're to live for him. We're to be like him as much as possible. Notice how he ends this now. He says, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Did you know that? God will never leave nor forsake us. God's not going to leave you in the middle of the stream. He will not abandon you as long as we are obedient to him. You see, but here it is. We're to be obedient to him. We're to obey his will. As long as we do that, we need not fear what God says or what, or what man says or what man does. Because God is going to see us through. If the business world collapses, down it goes. If the economy turns sour, down it goes. And if peace seems to be so far away, remember that God is our helper and he will see us through. I grew up in the Great Depression. Back in them days, people were moaning and groaning. <laughs> but do you know what? I look back at it, and I remember some of my friends and some of the families around us. They turned out better than most people anywhere. You know why? Because they turned to God, and they depended upon God, and they prayed, and they were obedient unto God. You see, here it is. A faith like that is worth everything. It'll put zest in your life. It'll, be, it'll bring power in your life. It'll bring peace and contentment in your life. Yes. And it'll bring the very presence of God in your life. Oh, all we have to do is ask for us. All he has for us to do is to turn from sin. He will save us. And he will be our Lord and our Savior. He'll never leave nor forsake us 
But he expects some things from us. I've always found it interesting how people can read the Bible. Man, they never quite get the fact that they're to be obedient to God, that they're to live for Him, serve Him, do His will with their lives. God wants you to be the kind of a individual that not only loves him but is obedient to him and to his word. Again I say we need to know what God is saying and we get that from the word of God. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never truly accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. You've never been saved. A lot of people try to live the Christian life and they never accepted Christ. Never truly given their heart and their life to Jesus. Well, all you have to do is believe. You know what Romans 10, 9 says, if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. Do you believe? Have you accepted him? You say, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I'm on my way to glory, on my way to heaven. Let me ask you this question. Are you living for Him? Are you obedient to Him? Let me read them verses again. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds. When's the last time you visited someone in prison? Or do you condemn them along with everybody else? And then which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. How about marriage? Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do to me. Don't worry so much about what man will do to you. Be concerned about what God will do to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, how we thank you and how we praise you for this day which you have given to us, a day that we've set aside to come and worship you. Lord, I pray as we look at these precious words and you're in your word, that we will try our very best to live for you, to be what you would have us be. Father, I pray that we will continually, let brotherly love continue. Oh, how we need that today. Someone say, oh, well, we need to love us sinners and all that. Yes, that's absolutely right. But it has to start between brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us, Lord God. Help us to understand what it is, what marriage is all about, what you have to say about it. And help us, Lord God, to always, whatever may come in our lives, to remember that you will never 
never leave nor forsake us. Father, I pray that every person here knows you as their personal Savior. But if it not, that this would be the time, be the hour, be the day, when they would say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, save my soul. And if they'll do that, then you'll save them. And they'll be in the race. And we want to run our very best and give it our all. And we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.